What's up guys, I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and this is part two for the build series for the Sound Sculptor EQ573. It's a Neve 1073 style EQ that I'm sure you should all be familiar with. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you missed part one of this video, I'll put a link right up here. But that's enough from me, let's get into the build. Welcome back to the channel guys. And today in this video, we're gonna be starting with the daughter boards that are used for the rotary switches. This board in particular is for the frequency select. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do is insert and solder 43 of the same exact type of resistors. They come joined all together, so it's nice and easy to find them. Um, you just need to stack them vertically and that's a bit tricky, but what I generally do is use a tool to bend the legs over so you're not damaging or potentially damaging the resistor. And then you vertically stack them, make sure you orient them correctly. There's a little circle where the bottom of the resistor should go and then just a through hole uh, part for the leg that you've bent over to go through. So just be very careful with your positioning of that because as you start to stack all these resistors, um, they need to be uh, orientated correctly to kind of fit on the board. So be careful with that one. And then once you've stacked all these vertical resistors, it's time to obviously solder the leg. So just flip the board over and you can start by soldering the legs that are easiest to get to, as I always do and then clip the legs away that you get soldered and then work your way in towards the other components. And because these uh, resistors are vertically stacked, they are quite close together. So the trick here is to just put a little bit of solder on your iron, hold it in place, and then add a small amount of solder. Don't overdo it with the solder on the iron. You only need a little bit. It will as long as you hold it on the connection point, the solder will just melt nice and easy. And I kind of have my soldering iron held at a little bit of an edge, um, just so the contact melts really nice and clean and it comes through and just melts really nice and easily. And you get the hang of it and then you can kind of just zip through it quicker than you think. And once you've soldered all the components and snipped legs, you're ready to move on to the switches. And with these switches, the first switch you have to put in place is the 12 positions rotary switch, and it will be used for the mid band frequency selector. Uh, it's the only 12 position one, so make sure that you put it on the right part of the daughter board. Uh, the position of the switches is critical for good front plate matching. So what you want to do is make sure that the three feet sit flat on the PCB. Um, what you can do is hold it in place um, with your hands between the daughter board and just solder one of the legs and do what we do with other bigger components where solder one leg, then solder like check the orientation and then solder the other legs and you can always fine adjust it um, that way. And then um, once it's firmly in position and uh, sort of even on the PCB, you can solder the rest of the legs for that switch. So after you've soldered the 12 position rotary switch, the next one to do is the longest um, shaft uh, switch uh, and that's going to be for your high pass filter. So that will be positioned on SW5. So make sure you get these all in the correct spots because the next three switches can all be used interchangeably and you don't want to put them in the wrong spot um, because that'll muck up your um, ability to put the right parts on when you put the knobs on later on. So make sure you get this right. Um, after you do the longest shaft switch, uh, then add um, SW1 and SW2, the remaining two switches to their positions. And it doesn't matter where you put either of these, they're identical, so you should be fine. And then the next component for this uh, board are the toggle switches, and therefore the EQ switch, which will change your mid band from 1073 mode to high Q mode. And they're also for the insert switch to insert your EQ on the preamp if you're using an MP573 preamp with this EQ. And like with the other switches, you wanna make sure that 
They are nice and flat on the PCB. So just hold them in place, solder one of the legs, then check the orientation and then solder the rest of the legs and then give them a snip. And then the next component is this two by 40 pins header. And to get this to work, what I did was, was solder one of the end legs, one of the other end legs, and then the middle leg uh, to hold it really flat on the board. So just hold that header in place, solder a leg on each side in the middle, and that will keep it nice and flat at a right angle on the board. Um, so you keep the orientation correct. Um, if you don't get this nice and square and flat, um, it'll be hard to join this daughter board to the motherboard later on. So make sure you get that right. And once you've got it flat on the board, you can go ahead like I show here and solder all of the external pins first. Um, just be careful, they are really close together and you don't want to accidentally create a short between any of these, but just make sure you don't add too much solder is really the trick. And because the metal pins are connected to a piece of plastic, you want to make sure that you don't overheat the pins either. So you have to be quite quick with this uh, section of the soldering. And you can see I'm kind of moving along nice and quickly and not holding the soldering iron for there too long and just adding a nice little dollop of solder. And then once you've done the external row, you can cut all of those soldered pins nice and flush to the board. You need to make sure you get them really nice and close to the board when you cut them. And then you can access the second row of pins a little easier and solder the second row in place and then cut those pins flush to the board as well. And that's it for the switches board. And next up is the potentiometers board and there's this CN2 connector and a two by eight pins header to solder on first. And all you wanna do with both of these is the same thing as always, hold them in place, um, solder one leg, check the orientation and then solder the rest of the pins and make sure that they are, you know, nice and right angle to the board and just nice and flush and then go ahead and give these connectors a snip and then next up we have to put in the potentiometers so these are the gain boost or cut potentiometers and just make sure at position one and position three you use the 10k a potentiometers and at position two which is the bottom one uh, you use the 47 k a potentiometer um, just make sure you get those right and you just put them into the board and line up the pins so they go through then you just need to put these washers and nuts on them to hold them in place which is nice and easy and then once they're securely fastened to the board you can solder their pins so there's three pins each really easy stuff just solder them in place and give them a snip and then next up is the io board which is the last of the daughter boards and first up you need to solder resistors 1 to 16 so just use the forming tool it's the easiest way to get these nice and in place and go through bend the legs put them in the board and then once you've stuffed the board with all the resistors you can go ahead and solder the legs in place and then give those a snip and then we've got to put in these little film capacitors there's two of them so with the film capacitors like we've talked about before hold them in place and then solder one leg and then solder the other leg once you've checked the orientation and make sure that they're in nice and neat and then after you do the film capacitors there's these other ceramic capacitors to put in as well there's three of them just these little yellow ones you can just bend those legs um, to hold them in place and then you can go ahead and solder them and then give those legs a snip and then next up are these IC sockets. There's two of them and you wanna make sure that they are put in place in the right orientation. So um, there's this little kind of divot that shows which way they should be placed to match up on the silkscreen PCB. And then what you do is once you've got them in the right orientation is solder one of those legs to hold it in place, just like with previous components and then check the orientation um, and it's nice and flat on the board and then solder the other legs. And then there's some electrolytic capacitors to solder in. Remember with electrolytic capacitors that it's very important to orient these properly. So 
make sure that the plus lead goes into the plus hole, which means the silver little line down the electrolytic capacitor is the negative lead. So that goes on the opposite side. So just make sure you get those right, um, put them in the board and then bend the legs and then like always you can solder one of the legs check the orientation of them bend them into place so they're nice and straight if you need to and then solder the other leg and then give those a snip and then lastly there is this 10 pin connector that we need to solder to cn4b same again just solder one leg first make sure that it's straight and flat on the board then solder the other pins and just make sure that you don't overheat these pins because it can melt the plastic and then they won't be straight. And then last but not least, you want to put these ICs U1 and U2 in each of their respective sockets. Make sure you put them in the right way with the little dot showing where the divot is in the silkscreen PCB. And just make sure you line them up correctly and you put them in the right socket and just be gentle with bending the legs. Don't force them into the sockets. Just make sure you gently bend the legs and put them in place carefully so you don't damage them. And then that's it for this build this week. Next week, we're gonna take a look at how to start piecing all these daughter boards to the motherboard and finally putting the whole thing together. So that should be pretty cool. I'll catch you then. Well, that's it for part two of the build for the Sound Sculptor EQ573 Neve 1073 style EQ. If you've got any questions about this build so far, please hit me up in that comment section down below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.